post it later. Uh, hello, everybody, and welcome to School on Wheels 2023 Summer Fun uh, on, uh, on School on Wheels Emotional Webinar. Um, my name is Edwin Flores. I'm the Program Development Coordinator of Training and Development for School on Wheels. Um, every year, a committee um, composed of School on Wheels coordinators and program developers create an insightful and fun summer program for tutors to keep their students engaged over the summer break. This year, our Senior Program Development Specialist, Allison Maldonado, is here to walk us through the summer program for this year and share an example of a summer program activity. Um, we cannot ask for a better host today, as Allison has a decade of experience with School on Wheels, which includes seven years as a Skid Row Learning Center instructor, overseeing our after-school program for students living in the Skid Row area of downtown LA. You guys may also know her from her current role in developing and coordinating several School on Wheels programs. Before School on Wheels, Allison spent six years as a special education teacher, helping students living with autism, emotional disturbance, speech and language impairment, and various other diagnoses. Allison recently earned her Master's of Arts in Psychology from Pepperdine University. Um, thank you so much for leading today's workshop, Allison. But before I pass the mic over to her, let's just take care of some brief um, Zoom housekeeping. Today's workshop is gonna be recorded so that we can post a video on our summer program website. But don't worry, it will not record any of your guys' uh, faces today. The public chat has also been disabled. However, the Q&A is open. Uh, the workshop is packed with so much information. So if there is a chance your questions are not gonna be answered sometime during the workshop, um, we will answer them at that point. If you guys still have to, at the end, um, we'll answer more questions. Uh, let's go ahead and get started with our summer program informational webinar. Without further ado, Allison, take it away. Thanks, Edmund, and hello, everybody. I am so excited to be meeting with you guys today to talk to you about our summer fun on wheels summer program. Um, just want to start with a little bit of self advocacy. I have a second monitor with my slides. If I ever look off to the side, don't worry, I'm still paying attention. Just looking over there real quick. I also sometimes, you know, I want to model for you guys along the way things you could be doing for your students. And my first SEL thing I'm going to uh, model is self advocacy. So I'm just going to give you guys a little bit of information on myself and how I host just to keep everybody on board. And if you're comfortable, you could share some things with your students about how you operate. Um, so sometimes I talk fast. <laughs> I do it. I know I'm aware. So if at any point I all of a sudden take a pause and take a moment, please know that's just me reminding myself to relax and have a good time, because this is what we're about here to do. We're here to have a good time and learn how we can continue to help our students. Um, also, I have my slides right in front of me as well. So if I'm ever fidgeting with paper, that's what I'm doing. Um, but please know I, am, I have been working on this and my team have been working on this for a while and we're so excited to finally bring this to you. Um, the goal with the Summer Fun on Wheels program, we really wanna help you maintain tutoring throughout your session, uh, throughout the summer. And we're here to provide you with content for that. So that's our goal for today is to go over how we're gonna help you maintain tutoring throughout the summer. Um, so without further ado, let's get started. All righty, so what are we gonna talk about today? You know, what's the content of our session? Um, I'm gonna go over the summer program. Why are we creating this? What is the overall objective behind it? And then we're gonna talk about our intentions. What do we intend for you to do with your student during the session? Keep in mind, it's great being a tutor because you're not that teacher. You get to suit the student, not the classroom. So we're going to talk about how you can adapt that activity content and use it to keep the summer sessions fun. We're going to talk about your routine, how to flow through that session. We're going to talk about the process and procedure. So essentially, how do you sign up for the summer program and what happens when you do? After we go over that, we're gonna talk about um, how we develop the program and a little bit about the incentives because who does not love a good little reward or incentive at the end of an accomplishment? Um, and then at the end, I'm gonna give you what's, that, what's ne next step. So what's next after we log off of this? All right, if everybody's ready, I am gonna get us going. All right, so like I said, overall objectives. Why do we have the summer program? We really want our students to continue tutoring throughout the summer. Summer break is just a time to focus on their needs, their skills, as opposed to homework and what's going on in the classroom. We're really working hard to combat the slide that occurs when everyday schooling is not occurring and stuff that even is still occurring because of the pandemic and students still experiencing that decline in academics. So we really are working hard to maintain tutoring throughout the summer to combat 
those academic slides the students might be experiencing. We're gonna provide session content and resources for you. The summer should be relaxing. So we don't want you spending your time figuring out what to do every single week, we got you. This way you have the content and you take that and you adjust it and personalize it for your student. And it'll make the sessions a lot more fun. It'll be rewarding for you as well. And that's what SEL is all about, ending up happy, feeling fulfilled and relieved. All righty. Um, with the social emotional program, um, what we wanted to really do is combine social and emotional traits with traditional academics. What that means is we're trying to help our students function comfortably in society and name and access their emotions. And the way to do that, not through therapy with us, we're doing it through academics. So this way your sessions become more about helping your student cope, helping your student get through that session and learning at the same time. The SEO traits we're gonna be presenting to you this year are curiosity, growth mindset, gratitude, kindness and happiness, and perseverance. If you were part of the summer program last year, some of these might be familiar to you. Keep in mind what we did is we took your feedback from last summer and we used that to adapt the activities. So if you worked on kindness and happiness last summer, it might be a little bit different this summer. We made the activities a little more exciting, added some worksheets. So keep that in mind if you worked on this last year and you see something that's recognizable, don't worry, we have little updates for you. The goal of this is to make this fun. We want students to enjoy and appreciate the learning time that they're spending with you. So the content is designed to be silly, it's designed to be fun, it's designed to be unique, and we want you to adapt that to your student. Um, I'm going to go over an actual activity later, and I'll give you some examples of how you can adapt it to fit your students' personal interests and even their cultural background. All right, now let's get into what you're going to be doing during the session. These activities are able to be completed in one session. So I'm going to go over a routine in a little bit. Um, the goal is for the overall, the traits to overlap. So what you're going to do is say, for example, you pick kindness and happiness. For three sessions, you're going to be working on kindness and happiness throughout all three sessions. The activities might not build upon each other. You might work on an activity one day, and it's a totally different activity the next session. Uh, only one trait overlaps, and if you can guess, it's perseverance. <laughs> we want to help your student persevere throughout one activity, and that one activity is going to continue throughout the three sessions. So there's only one SEL trait that overlaps between sessions. But just like the other ones, the concept of the trait continues throughout everything you're doing. We have SEL and academic components. Part of the session is going to contain a social and emotional check-in, a main activity, and a check-out. All of the main activities, check-ins, check-outs contain different academic components. English language arts, history, science, math, research. It's writing, We're really excited about writing this year. So we really wanted to make sure that your student is, is combating that summer slide, but actually growing as a person as well. The activities are grade level implicit. What we mean by that is you're not gonna find something that says, if your student's in kinder through first grade, watch this video. The reason we took that feature out and made them universal examples is we don't wanna assume that a high school student's not gonna enjoy the cartoon. We don't want to assume that a third grader doesn't enjoy TED Talks. So we leave it grade level implicit so that you can adapt to your student. I mean, I'm an adult and I love cartoons. <laughs> so I would definitely pick the cartoon option if my tutor gave me that option. So think about that with your student. You want to work together. So might even present them the options. Be like, which one do you want to watch? Maybe you know, maybe there's a video with their favorite singer we chose. Pick that video for them. So keep that in mind when you're working with your student is that you want to adapt to them, not their grade. Adapt to their ability and preference, not their grade assignment. All right, now that you know what's going on, let's get into that routine. So we start our sessions with a five minute check-in. Throughout the school year, our check-ins are non-traditional. In other words, we try not to say, how are you? because kids are gonna say, okay, fine or good. Those are your three responses. 
So our check-ins, we try to leave it open-ended during the school year. You know, what's something that made you smile this week? Talk about something that was funny. So we're trying to bring that same concept to our summer session and in our check-ins, it's gonna give you videos, quotes, different things to expand you and your students' idea of how to check in with each other. After that, I want you to spend some time doing a little session review and preview. What that means is, keep in mind the traits are overlapping. So you can ask them, do you remember what we talked about last week? Do you remember some of the activities we did? And then talk about how that's gonna to connect to the activities you're doing today. We're gonna to keep working on kindness and happiness and here's how we're gonna do it today. We still wanna focus on our core programs, you know, improving students' literacy, using Freckle, helping them improve their math skills, life skills. So we did carve out some time to work on those core program activities. If you're unfamiliar with what I'm talking about, reach out to your coordinator. <laughs> After that, everybody deserves a break. So make sure to take a break with your student and whatever you guys usually do during your break, we left that up to you. After the break, you're gonna do a 20 minute summer program activity. That's gonna be the main activity that I mentioned. That's gonna be a more in-depth look into the treat that you choose. Um, next, I'm gonna be giving you guys an example of that main activity. So we'll be going over that. At the end of the session, you're gonna spend some time doing a reflection checkout. It is set up for 10 minutes on the routine, but we wanted to give you some gap in case your other activities took a little bit longer. Maybe that reflection checkout is gonna be five minutes. That's totally reasonable because you're focusing on what you should be focusing on and using that time in a productive manner stuff. Um, for the checkout, it's called a reflection checkout because we're still reflecting on the trait and what we learned about it that day. So we want you to reflect on the session, the trait, the activities in a unique and different way each session. So we'll be providing that variety to you as well. All right, we're moving on now. Just a reminder, before I get into how you're going to um, an actual activity, uh, I want to remind you of our intentions. So while I'm giving you an example activity, think of your student. Think of your student and remember that the goal is to complete this in one session. You want to help them with their social emotional learning traits and you want to help them with academic components that you need. And think about them as a person and not I'm working with a third grader. So you can look at the activity I'm about to share with you and think about how your student would enjoy that and you would tweak it to kind of fit their interest. All right, you ready? Let's do it. Our sample activity is called Dream Vacation. Before I get into this, I wanna let you know, this was an activity from last year, but it is not in the packets this year. We wanted to choose one that's not in the packets. So you could be surprised by what you find in this year's activities. So this is an example from last year. The SEL trait we're working on is kindness and happiness. For our check-in, we're gonna have a discussion with the student. We're gonna tell them, you're gonna go on a dream vacation and you're gonna take someone who's been kind to you. Who would you wanna take and why? Discuss and list a few locations of interest. And this is where it gets fun and personalized. Your student could think of anywhere. I put three examples here of where I wanna go, Italy, the moon, and Sesame Street. Um, so keep that in mind. We want to make this fun. You don't, it doesn't have to be realistic places they could fly to. We want to use our imagination because that makes me happy. And remember, we're working on happiness. Um, so keep that in mind. We're just a five minute check in. You know, where would you go? What would you do? Who would you take? And then it's time for the main activity. We do provide multiple worksheets for these activities. When I say provide multiple worksheets, I mean we're adapting to remote, we're adapting to in-person. We want you to print it out, pull it up as a presentation, take out a piece of paper and write down on another paper. You know, adapt this to what fits for your student, but we are providing lots of worksheets. My team got very creative and they're super cute. Uh, color, print them out in color, print them out in black and white, whatever works for you guys. So for our dream vacation main activity, you're gonna write a note, letter, text message to someone who has been kind to you, inviting them to join. Once again, we're offering you options or maybe your student thinks of text message, put in some emojis in there, adapt to your student. You're gonna design an itinerary for the vacation. You're gonna talk about what you're gonna do first, then where you're gonna go, what you're gonna do there. On the worksheet, you can add pictures, um, make it fun and take that next bonus step and go to Google and search for different places. I don't know if you guys know this, but if you Google search Hogwarts, you can actually like get a view of it. Um, they'll take you to like Middle Earth. So it's really fun to just show your students the different places and fictional maps that you can see and visit. 
All right, now we've checked in, we've had an activity. Let's get ready to check out and end our session. So for this day, we're gonna have a visualization. We're gonna reflect on what we've talked about and we're gonna visualize. They're gonna pick a destination and one of the methods of transportation. They're gonna close their eyes and describe the journey destination using different senses. Keep in mind, adapt to your student. If they're not comfortable closing their eyes, they don't have to. Keep that in mind. Um, so an example here is they close their eyes and they imagine putting on an Iron Man suit and flying over Sesame Street. If you can guess, this is my example of what I would like to do. <laughs> and then it'll give you some reflection questions to keep the conversation going. So this is what I mean when I say fun, adaptable, and academic and SEO. All righty. Now, we've gone over why we're doing this, what's in it, and how you're going to fill that hour. Next, what we're gonna go over is how do you sign up? What do you get in the end? And then what's gonna happen next? So first, explore the website. We have a brand new SEL 2023 website for you that you can explore on your own just to get familiar with it. But then you're gonna explore it with your student, okay? The important part of exploring it with your student is you wanna look over the traits together. You wanna choose the traits together. You wanna fill out the form together. This is a joint part when you pick the trait. Um, remind your student that each trait has three sessions worth of activities. I put that there because I wanna remind you, if you start now, you can do another activity and then do another activity and then do another activity all until the end of summer. So you don't have to pick one. If your student's like, I wanna do that one and that one. Great, do the next one when you're done with the first one. So keep that in mind as well. So you've explored the traits, you've chosen one. Now you're gonna fill out the enrollment form. There's an enrollment form directly embedded on the website. It's underneath the traits, so you just have to scroll down. You fill that form out together. The reason it's important to fill it together is because there are questions for your student to answer. So keep that in mind. Do not just assume, oh, he told me the trade, I'll fill it out later. Oh, they told me the trade, I'll fill it out later. There are questions for them to fill out and we want them to be a part of the process and procedures. Once the form is submitted, check your email because you're gonna get a link to a PDF of the activity packet. This PDF is gonna have reminders, tips, facts, information, things you could say to your student, little mini scripts where it says, tell your student this. Um, the PDF is very organized with clickable links, each activity has its own page. So you just start at the top and work your way through it throughout your three sessions. All righty, next step. You've picked your trait, you've got your activities, you've worked on them for three sessions. What do you do when you're done? At the end of the third session, you're gonna fill out a completion form. The completion form is very important because it's gonna ask your student for feedback. It's gonna ask for your opinion and please know these opinions matter we use them to adapt all of our SEL programs. So your opinion matters. It's also going to remind you and provide a link so you could choose a new trait. You finish one, start the other if you have time. Once you've submitted the completion form, check your email because you're going to get an email with the details about ordering prizes. And now the best part, the prizes. Everybody loves an incentive, so let's go over them. The student prize is awarded for the completion of each packet. Now that's bold on top because only the student prize is awarded for each completion. Um, I'll go over that in a minute. But when your student completes the packet, they get to choose an item or items of our summer Amazon wish list. We have an Amazon wish list compiled of prizes that have been popular with our students in the past and new prizes that we've added. Your student can pick item or items up to $20 in value. You submit that on a form that you're gonna get in that email and the prizes are shipped directly to your student. So that's the great part. They'll get a package in their name with a prize that they've won or earned, I should say. <laughs> um, the best part about it is we try to package it to the student's name and I have heard from many students, it's the first package they've ever gotten. It's so cool when they're the only one in the shelter to get a package and then other kids wanna sign up. So keep that in mind and just have fun when you're shopping. We also want to provide the tutor a gift. We have a list of School on Wheels items, t-shirts, hats, pens, pencils, highlighters um, that we want to gift to you. So you can actually get a prize as well, or you can opt out. We don't want to force any extra stuff on you, but you earned it, so take it. 
Um, we want to reward the parent or guardian as a sign of gratitude. Talk about gratitude as a sign of gratitude for helping their student attend those sessions and getting them there and instilling the value of education in their student. The way we're going to do that is by awarding them a $75 Kroger gift card. A Kroger gift card works at stores like Ralph's and Food for Less, so they can buy a plethora of items for their family. Um, please note that it is one per family. So if you have a student that has multiple siblings at School on Wheels, first one to finish it awards that prize to the family. It is not a different gift card for each member of the family. We don't give a gift card every single completion packet. Um, so please keep that in mind. Once you finish the first packet and the family gets it, we want to make them give the intention that they are not going to be keep continually awarding, be getting, earning that. Flustered, see what happened when I talk fast? I warned you guys. <laughs> Um, so these are the different prizes that we want to incentivize everyone with and reward everyone with. And this is just our thank you for helping your student, for getting this, the parents getting to the student to the session, and the student for putting in that time and effort. All right, prizes. We've gone over everything. So now what's next? So if you're here, you're going to get an email with a link to the website when it goes live. If you're watching from the website, just scroll on down so you can get started. If you're watching live, it's going to be on the website so you can rewatch in case I did talk too fast and you missed anything. <laughs> so keep that in mind. We want to support you as much as possible. Please feel free to email us, reach out. Our email is going to be on the packet so you can reach out for any advice and tips. Um, and I have the most, I saved the most important thing for last. Have fun. If you are not having fun during the sessions, you are not doing it right. <laughs> Remember, you are suiting the student, not the classroom. We are having fun with our student through bonding, SEL, and academics. That is the joy of being a tutor, is you're so much more than just a teacher. And on that, I have the utmost respect and gratitude for every single tutor at School on Wheels. You are all a part of the team. Whenever I say the School on Wheels team, I'm not talking about the staff, I'm talking about the tutors, students, parents, everybody. Um, so thank you guys all for taking the time to listen to me, for taking the time to put this effort into helping your students over the summer. And a big thank you to everyone pictured here who helped develop these activities and develop the program. The team is amazing and we've been working really hard and we cannot wait to share it with everybody. Thank you. <laughs>